At last, after five days, we finally managed to cross the frontier from Germany into Czechoslovakia. After five days of saying no, the barrier was finally opened. A border guard checked the visas that had only been issued half an hour before. Then, after a warning that the Russians might confiscate the cameras, a friendly salute as we drove into his country, now run by the Russians. The first few miles were deserted, where only a few days ago, 40 Russian tanks were parked on both sides of the road. Czech resistance may be puny against the might of the Russians, but they're fighting their battle with paintbrushes. They've daubed over all the signposts to confuse the occupying army as part of their non-violent opposition. It's all helped to demoralize the Russians. The silent defiance of the Czechs is plastered across nearly every available space on the road to Prague. They may be unable to fight back with guns, but they keep up the spirits of the people with their slogans. Twenty miles in, we saw the first real sign of the Russian occupation, a line of tanks spread across a field about 40 yards apart. A quiet Sunday, a long way from home for part of the huge army of occupation. President Svoboda is reported to have refused to agree to an army of occupation, but from the signs here, he's arguing from a position of extreme weakness. Everywhere, the Czech flag flies at half-mast, sometimes together with a black flag. The Czechs haven't been slow to compare the Russian occupation with the actions of the Nazis. Posters showing the Russian soldiers with bayonets dripping with blood are pasted alongside cartoons of the jackboot. And slogans on the wall tell the Russians where they should go. The road to Prague runs through villages almost completely deserted by the older Czechs, but the youngsters scrawl their feelings on hastily prepared posters. It's not much of a protest, but it's had the effect of upsetting the Russians. In Prague itself, the Russians don't look too happy. They're here in massive force. The mere sight of the huge tanks with their heavy guns ought to dismay the people of Prague. A week ago, they thought they were on the road to democracy. Now they live in the presence of a force that could squash any attempt at revolution. The tanks are parked at every strategic point in the city. They look horribly out of place in a city which depends on trams for transport. The Czechs seem to be doing their best to carry on life as normally as possible and ignore the Russians. On this first Sunday of occupation, they were out in their thousands in their summer clothes. Prague may be a beleaguered city, but the people have done their best to cheer up the place. They've decked up the statues of their national heroes with flowers and flags. One has been given a black blindfold. In the heart of the city, in Wenceslas Square, the people have been out every day in defiance of the Russian tanks parked a few yards away. The centre of the defiance is the statue of Svati Vaklav, a 10th century hero. Behind the statue is the museum building, pockmarked with holes made by machine guns. And at the foot of the statue, bunches of flowers and a candle remember some of those who were killed by bullets. The statue is used as a rallying point. A youth with a megaphone taunts the Russians on one side, while on the other, a student reads from a rebel newspaper. A helicopter scatters Russian propaganda over the square, but in the square, the free press is handed out to an eager audience. A new edition appears every few hours, delivered under the guns of the tanks by a boy on a motorcycle. The Russians are jamming foreign news broadcasts, but the Czechs still have the freedom of an underground press. But with all the solidarity of the Czechs, they're bitterly disappointed by the Russian takeover. How do you feel about what's happened here in Prague? Uh, it's, it's unbelievable. Everything is unbelievable what happened here. You can't imagine how can I feel if I came home and uh, found the uh, Russian army everywhere around us. And, uh, you know, nobody could believe that, that they will come and, uh, you know, before, before that, we saw that everything is already settled and everything is okay. And afterwards, they came and they shoot people and they killed a lot of people. And uh, they are everywhere. You know, it's something terrible. What can the Czech people do, do you think, to get their freedom? Uh, it's very... You know, I really don't know. You can't think what happened the next day what will happen the next day. We hope that the Svoboda will come back from, from uh, Russia and the Dubček will come from, from Russia and they will bring us uh, the freedom again and that we will have again our democracy and everything. Well, the feelings of that 
young girl who came back from holiday on Tuesday to find the Russians here as shared by everyone here in Wenceslas Square. They don't really have too much hope. The Russians are here, the tanks are here, the guns are here, but they're demonstrating their right for democracy.